I suppose that um, insofar as I belong in this debate, it, it is as someone who has come late in life to some kind of reaffirmation of the sort of faith that um, Jonathan lost as a boy, which I also lost at the same time, uh, and come by very devious paths, uh, and uh, paths which are strewn with doubt and disappointment. Uh, so, um, but nevertheless, it has came as a shock to me that uh, atheism should suddenly become quite such a fashionable cause, and that um, distinguished intellectuals should write books advocating it without a sense that they were taking anything away from people. Uh, and I think this is the most remarkable feature of the um, Dawkins phenomenon, is that uh, he and his uh, colleagues have learned how to present atheism as a liberation. They say, we are setting you free. That's the only message that actually sells books in the millions. Um, the Quran, perhaps, is the one exception to this. <laughs> but uh, I think that they... <laughs> This idea that, you're being, that you can be set free from religion is uh, itself a very naive one because it, it um, doesn't engage with that part of the human condition from, from which religion springs. And that's just what I want to say in the few minutes uh, available to me. I think there are, there are two aspects to religion uh, and it's unclear how they're connected. One is the aspect of belief. People believe in God. They believe in the validity of a certain message. They have a certain metaphysical picture of the, of the world as, as a created thing rather than an accidental thing. This is a very powerful system of belief for which uh, it is very hard to find any reasons, just as it is hard to find any reasons against it. But that's not the whole of religion. Far more important is the sense of membership. This was pointed out by the great sociologist Emil Durkheim, when people, uh, who himself was a kind of atheist, uh, in the very early days of sociology, people actually join a religion, uh, and, or if, if they're born into it, they, they sense the pull of their community, which, which uh, retains them within the fold of that religion during their life until they lose it. And losing it is an existential drama. It's not simply uh, changing your mind as... Um, uh, Jonathan just said from the uh, wonderful example of Elsmere. This kind of joining which makes religion so important to people's lives has, brings with it a sense of the sacred, a sense that, that the world isn't just a, a collection of things, that, that the world embodies a kind of revelation within itself so that there are moments, there are times, there are episodes, there are even objects and uh, and people who are bathed in a kind of light from another sphere, that there's a sense of sanctity which invades your experience as, you, uh, uh, as a result of your membership of the, of the congregation. And this is something for which people yearn, which they miss, uh, and indeed which they come back to late in their life. Jews in particular are very good at this, at spending their whole lives as, uh, as atheists, but nevertheless retaining that sense of the sacred moment to which they come back uh, in their final hours. We have been living through a time when uh, the sense of the sacred has been disparaged. We're living, a, as another great uh, sociologist, Weber, said, in a world which has become disenchanted. More, worse than disenchanted, it's become desecrated in the sense that those parts of human life, those episodes within human life from which our ancestors recuperated an idea of sacred things have been... Uh, dragged through the mud. I'm thinking in particular of the experience of sex, which um, for our ancestors was the primary revelation of the sacred in their lives, and also uh, the, the sense of uh, family, the sense of piety towards ancestors and so on. All those things have been put on sale and uh, their aura has been cancelled. But nevertheless, we have to ask ourselves why it is that that existed, that sense of the sacred and that desire to belong to a community which kept it in being. I think there is something deep in human nature that needs this and that people need to see life as having that sacred aspect because without it, there isn't an answer to the question, why am I here? Why do I exist? Why are you here? And why am I in relation to you? If we are simply objects in a world of objects, then that sense of the meaning of our own life disappears. 
So I, I think that um, in the end, our sense of the sacred is connected with our recognition that we are not just objects in a world of objects. We are subjects in relation to each other, and that relation sets us in some way outside the natural order. And um, this is a revelation that we're granted in communities, and it's one reason why communities turn instinctively towards a concept of the transcendental. I'm not saying that it's easy to justify that concept, but it is very difficult to live a proper life without it. Thank you.